All right, next up we have Torkel, who will be telling us about uh, efficient modeling of biochemical reaction networks. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be presenting uh, diff -EQ Biological, which is, which is a package for modeling biochemical reaction networks. Uh, this one does not work as expected. This did right now. Okay, good. Uh, so I will start off with introducing systems biology, which is the field where I work, and then continue to the tool itself. So we are trying to study biological system and what kind of function they have. So many other biologi biologicians typically study an individual gene or an individual protein, trying to figure out how does this protein look like, what does this protein do. Instead, we look at many interaction proteins and trying to see what functions do they perform together. Uh, this plot is a bit uh, messy, and that's intentional, so you don't have to look deep into it. This is quite a typical problem that we have. So you have some kind of system input, in this case is the heat experienced by a bacteria. Then we have a big mess here of interactions that are processing this input, and then out here we have some kind of response. And we're trying to figure out exactly how does this thing in the middle process the input to create the response. And if we can do that, we can also attack other problems like trying to figure out how exactly do we want to heat up this bacteria to kill it as efficiently as possible? And in synthetic biology, you also go the other way around and say, we want to perform this function, what type of system should we build? And as you saw in the last system, these things get increasingly complex and it gets harder and harder to try and understand this problem with conventional methods. So instead we use mathematical models. And I'm a mathematician, so that's what I work with. But still I want to emphasize that it's a quite uh, tight cooperation between experimentalists and people working in theory. When we want to model this kind of system, this is the typical workflow we have. So we start off here, we have some biological system, we read the literature, we talk to people who know it, try to understand it. After that, we try to re write it down as a set of biochemical reactions. So here I've said we have components X and Y, these components react together, becomes component Z, and we can have component Z splitting become components X and Y. And the reason that we want to make this step is that we for here, there ex exists standard methods to moving from reaction networks into equations. So next step when we're trying to create a model is that we apply the standard methods to a reaction network. We create some equations. After that, we write our uh, equations into a favorite programming language, Julia. There is an, no, I think I messed this one up. Uh, we have an essential debugging step down here. So we have to debug our code. When we've done all of this, we can actually move into the in analysis. So we start looking at the model, trying to understand what is going on. After a while, we realize that the model is slightly wrong, so we have to move back here, rewrite the networks, we do all the entire circle again. Uh, and what we have here is that we have quite a lot of very standardized sets. So we start with this, we apply this set of methods, we make our equations, and every time you do this, you do pretty much the same thing again. The same thing, writing equations into code, not that interesting. Uh, so I have written this down as this is the boring part. Also for the debugging, I have saved the very boring part. <laughs> and what we want to do in DFAQ Biological is to try and remove the boring part, and we can uh, spend more time doing fun stuff. So we actually have some luck. Usually when I have this very uh, steps when we're doing standardized stuff, which I also said this is a problem because it's boring. It's also good because it's typically kind of things that is perfect for a computer to do. And in this case, we are lucky that it's actually very possible to automize these kind of steps and let the computer do it. So this is a new improved workflow. So instead of um, like we did before, we will write down our biochemical reactions, either conceptually in our mind or we actually write them down on paper. Here, we can write them down directly into computer code. So we write them directly into computer code, and then we let the computer do the steps that we don't like. So we let the computer go from reactions to creating the equations. We let the computer, from the equations, make something that can simulate from it. This will also reduce the debugging quite significantly. And the idea here is that we can spend more time doing the fun stuff over here. So moving how this actually works, so we have created a DSL, domain-specific language, and now we're actually getting to the Julia details. 
But if we look directly at the uh, Julia code, here we have a line where it says at reaction networks, and what this basically tells Julia that what is coming up next is not normal Julia code, it's a special type of coding language that we have created. And then here we very specifically write down these biochemical reactions very similar to how we would write them on paper. So we can see at the first an example, first we start with KP, this is a parameter trying to describe how fast does this reaction occur. Next we have <coughs> components K plus T, reacts becomes components K plus TP. So K in this case is preserved, while T becomes TP. And then we can continue one line for every reaction. And the charm with this one is that how our code looks very similar to how actually a chemist would write this, a biochemist would write this. And that means that when I look at my code, the thing I see corresponds very well to what it actually means. And that helps both write, read, and debug. Going into more of the details, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Metaprogram. That was very new when I came into Julia. And I was to highlight this is actually one of the things that we can do. So what is happening is that this is the code that I write. Then we use this metaprogramming. We will let Julia make code for us. And Julia will then do a set of transformation moving from this to this. So while this is not standard valid Julia code, this is standard value Julia code. And Julia can understand and read this. So the nice thing is that we see this, Julia see this, and both of us get something that we can read and understand. This is designed to work with differential equations package. Uh, I just showing the workflow here. We use differential equations, we use plots. We declare a model like this. We can set our parameter values. We can set our initial conditions. We can set how long do we want to simulate this system. We gather everything up in an ordinary differential equation problem. We solve a problem and we plot it. So also make some final notes in case anyone actually interested in using this. Uh, a main, uh, main point with this is that it handles stochastic methods. Uh, I'm putting a bit of a parenthesis on this, but if the people that are actually working with this kind of things, this might be very interesting to you. Uh, and this is also a part of the differential equations package. So if you're using differential equations, this is somewhere down there to use if you want to. Uh, finally up, I want to uh, thanks all the people that have been involved or have not been involved, and I need to zoom down a little bit so I can show my sponsors as well. European Union seems like a very nice place, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I think so. Uh, thank you all for your attention. All right, are there any questions? Thanks a lot, great stuff. Um, can, could you give us a couple more details, if you can, on, on how the actual transformation from rule to code, what it actually does? Uh, yes, uh, I can do that. So I will zoom to, no, I can go to this one. Uh, so we have a set of, uh, so basically what happens in uh, each reaction, I will actually take one this particular picture. In each reaction, we have a reaction rate, that is how fast it, oh wait, first. Uh, every component of the system, so we have those K, first we parse everything, we check every component we have. We have K, we have T, we have TP, we have K1, we have K2. Each of these one will become a variable in a set of ordinary differential equation. Uh, then we parse everything and makes a list of all of the reactions that exist. Uh, then usually when you have one of these reactions, they will, since we have an ordinary differential equation, we want to write down the rate of change in a specific parameter. Uh, that can be written down very simply. So for example, this reaction will contribute to a reduction in T and an uh, increase in TP. Uh, it won't affect the rate of K. Uh, at this rate, uh, and due to how these kind of things work, the rate will also increase with the substrate. So we have a lot of K and a lot of T in our mix of stuff. Of course, a lot more K and T will encounter each other and will react. Uh, so in this case, the rate is just KP times the concentration of K times the concentration of T. Uh, so in principle, you create this list of all of the reactions. You parse it. For each reaction, I quite easily for this form, I realize how much is the rate of change in K, T, and TP due to this reaction. 
uh, and then I have a list of all the differential equations and for each reaction I parse then I calculate this rate and I add it to all of these things in some growing list. Uh, and yeah, so in principle like the last, now I need to make some replacements here. So I think du1 here would be k, du2 would be t. So all of these start with a du1 is equal to nothing and then this one is parameter five would correspond to that one, those rates and we're like, add mm -hmm. set of blocks like this. It's, it's not the most interesting of programming, I would say. Mm. This looks uh, very interesting to me. Uh, is there anything uh, specific to biology or can any kind of reaction network be? Uh, Program. So I, I know that there's some simple like disease spread. So I use them only for like biochemical reaction, like things <coughs> that goes on in cell. I know there's some quite simple like disease spread model we use in similar framework. Uh, in principle, like the, the framework for making this model is straightforward. So I would not be surprised if there was some like entirely different thing you could model using this, uh, but not to my knowledge. Yeah, I'm just thinking like uh, in geochemistry or earth systems modeling. Uh, in say uh, Like geochemistry or earth systems modeling uh, I, and I guess a lot of other fields as well. Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, even if I, I think that in a lot of this like modeling fields, like just simply this idea that at least in my field, it's ha have been so easy to like, I, I think about my models in terms of this, and the computer thinks them like this, and it's actually a very easy transformation. So I can actually like, I ne never even have to care about this. Well, uh, to some, sometimes I have to care about that. But so I think like, even if this is not how your models look like, you can think of this general that m maybe your, your other field source can do this kind of DSLs. Hi, um, is there a limit to the number of reactions this can model? No. So uh, a system of say 25 interlinked ODEs, would it be able to handle? Say a system of 25 interlinked ODEs, uh, could so it I, handle that? I, 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 to one, I, have te I have not tested it. Uh, <laughs> I, I have used 10 components. I, I presume that you can scale it as, up as much as possible, but sooner or later like you're simulating large system, I, I think like, Actually, like the simulations of the systems in differential equations will be the limiting factor, uh, maybe. Um, another quick question. Can you choose the solver that it uses? Uh, so, so in principle, like, uh, like selecting solver and everything, everything works like normal you would do in differential equations. Like there's an overload to the, all of the ODE problem, the SDE problems, and like normally on ODE problem you give a function defined like, well, this, uh, and then uh, UNOS here, and then here you can show the solver. And everything is exactly the same. Just instead of giving it a function, you give an object like this. So it's, it's very much like using differential equations like usual. Yep, and I just want to add, if, you, if 25 ODEs doesn't work, then just send us a message and we'll make sure it works. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much, Torkel. This yes, is great work. You.